ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to show you a rheumatoid hand. A rheumatoid hand has typical deformities. And if you look at this hand, this speaks itself. There is an ulnar deviation. The normal hand is deviated on the ulnar side that you can see. It's very typical. And then if you look, there is a swelling of MCP, PIP joints. There's a wasting of the interosseous muscles. And if you look at the fingers, so swan neck deformities have started to begin. It's not a full-blown swan neck deformity. But on the whole, if you look at this hand, this appears to be a very, very typical rheumatoid hand. Now, can I see the other one? Here, if you look at this hand, this is not that much deviated to the ulnar side. But here, if you look at this finger, this is the beginning of swan neck deformity. So this is showing other features, but inflammatory features are more present on the left hand. Now, with this hand, I think as far as treatment of rheumatoid is concerned, well, that has to be done by a rheumatologist, and rightly so, using all those methods which should not only treat the patient, but should also prevent the patient from deformities, which includes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, if needed to, adding steroid into the treatment, and disease-modifying drugs, these are essentials to be used, and this patient is already received in this. Today, what kind of bracing or splintage should be done so as to prevent this deformity? Because this is the time to help the patient. Once the deformity has actually occurred, then it is very difficult to redo it. Deformities in a rheumatoid hand occur due to subluxation. There is a synovial fluid which increases pressure on the <coughs> synovial area and the capsule of the joint and ultimately the capsule is loosened or it bursts and when it does not give a support to the joints, the joints deviate, they dislocate or in fact what we call subluxation. So that is what is the result. So this means now the line of pull is a bunker. You see the line of pull which should have been in a straight line is deviated onto the left side. That is why it is being pulled on the other side. And then similarly since the hand is not very functional as a result of inflammation therefore these muscles which are introsiae muscles they remain restricted, they don't work, and they go into atrophy. So the first thing is, as far as the hand is acute, there should be no exercise. As far as the acute swelling is concerned, treat it with cold packs. Don't use heat, don't rub anything, no massage, and no exercise. You should rather try to give rest to the joint. You can give a rest with a splint. And normally, the splint we use is this splint. It has different shapes and versions. This is a rheumatoid wrist splint. It's, a, it's not a corrective splint, it's a wrist splint. And you know, for this hand, if you like, you can give this kind of a, this will prevent this hand from further deformity. Now she will she feel very comfortable with this hand. And this has to be used till there is an acute swelling in the hand. And then even otherwise after that, this should be used to prevent this deformity from getting worse. And then later on, we can replace this 
with dynamic splints also, which at the moment are not required. Now, for this hand, we got finger splints. If we think that there is a deformity, if you look at this deformity, so we can use a finger splint. We can use this splint. So as to, to correct it. Now, depending on the size of the patient, this could be used like this. It can be used. It is, you can change the size and the grip. So, it can be used temporarily and this again would work as a resting splint age. So for a rheumatoid hand you can have in acute stage a splint age which gives rest to the joint and no exercises. So what exercises are to be done in a rheumatoid patient that we will discuss in the next chapter. Thank you very much. Any question you would like to ask? I think uh, I think I think this is this very important question. As lo as long as there's an acute inflammation and there's a pain and the joints are tender, no exercise. Once the pain has subsided, then you should try to make sure that exercise should be done in the right plane. For example, is Bankaro. If she will do like this, this probably would be wrong. This will worsen the deformity. If she wants to do an exercise, we must first correct it. Bring it in alignment. And now, up bankaro, muti. You see? Phir karo. All right. Or dabai rakho, dabai rakho. This becomes isometric. So you have to do very tailored made exercises. In fact, they need more of an occupational therapy and physiotherapy together in the maintenance and improvement of the strength of these muscles. Because simultaneously, you have to maintain the range of movement, prevent contractures, strengthen the muscles, and prevent the deformities. So all these components should be a part of, rather than asking the patient to do the exercise herself. I hope this answers your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.